today's webinar, we're going to be going through an introduction to BCL to FastQ version 2. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the scope of today's talk, uh, first we're going to cover an introduction to BCL to FastQ version 2. This webinar is focused only on BCL to FastQ version 2, and so we are not going to cover BCL to FastQ 1.8.4, also known as CASAVA. We're then going to talk about the requirements and how to run BCL to FastQ version 2. We'll cover some commonly used options, and then we'll discuss some frequently asked questions. All right, so for our first section, BCL to FastQ version 2 basics. Let's just start with what is BCL to FastQ version 2? So it is a Linux-based software, and it's used to convert BCL files. Those are the main output of Illumina sequencers and convert them to FASTQ files, which uh, most uh, experimenters are, use, are interested in using for downstream analysis. BCL to FASTQ can perform the multiplexing um, per the sample sheet instructions. And so if you multiplex your samples together, you can specify the index sequences in a sample sheet and then demultiplex the data so that each read is assigned to the correct sample. BCL to FASTQ is command line configurable, and there are some options, such as the use bases mask command. And we're going to go through some configurable settings in more detail in later slides. We do want to note that Base Space Sequence Hub also uses BCL to FastQ version 2 for FastQ generation. And so you should see very good parity between your FastQ files generated locally with BCL to FastQ compared to the BCL or the FastQ files generated on Base Space. So BCL to FastQ supports all Illumina sequencing platforms all the way down from the iSeq up to the NovaSeq. One thing that I do want to call out is that BCL to FastQ version 2 is required for sequencing platforms that use RTA2 and 3. I do also want to note that uh, if your sequencing data is generated from a um, version of real-time analysis uh, that is uh, earlier than 1.18, you may need to use BCL to FastQ 1.8. All right, so what are BCL files? BCL files are base call files, and this is considered the raw sequencing data generated from a sequencer. It's a binary file, and it contains the base call and quality scores for each tile of your sequencing cycle. And these files are produced on instrument by the real-time analysis software, also known as RTA. And so the main output of BCL to FastQ is going to be your FastQ files. These are text files, and they'll con contain the sequencing data from clusters. Each entry consists of four lines. And so the first is going to be the sequence identifier, and that has information specific to the sequencing run as well as specific to the cluster. And so you can see that it will contain the instrument serial number that was used to sequence the data. It will contain the flow cell ID as well as additional information such as the X and Y position of the clusters based on the tile that it's from. The second line is going to be the actual sequence that the sequencer reads. And so these are going to be the specific base calls, your A's, C's, T's, and G's, as well as N's in some specific cases. In between the second and third line, it's always going to be separated by a plus sign, and then the fourth line is going to contain your base call quality scores. And so these are ACI symbols, and it's a FRED 30 plus 33 encoded symbol. And so each symbol corresponds to a specific quality score. For example, a uh, symbol A corresponds to a FRED quality score of 32. As I mentioned uh, previously, BCL to FastQ is capable of demultiplexing um, sequencing data to assign the reads to each specific sample. And so you can see in your sample sheet, let's just simplify it to if you have uh, your first index sequence is red and your second index sequence is yellow, then that'll correspond to sample one and so forth and so on for samples two, three, and four. It's just going to be based on the sequences specified in the sample sheet. All right, so really quickly, let's just put it all together. And so in this specific example, I have seven very simplified um, 
BCL files, and they contain five different clusters. Each color corresponds to a different base. And so when BCL FASTQ first starts, it's going to read the BCL files. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to reduce the dimensionality of the BCL files. And so let's just take the BCL files and make them align. And so the first uh, square corresponds to that red cluster on top, and as you go down, each square corresponds to the different clusters. And so now let's just do that for all the different uh, BCL files. Let's put them in a line starting from cycle one to cycle seven. BCL FASTQ can then generate the sequencing reads just by lining up those BCL files. And now we can combine that with the index information. And so in our sample sheet, let's just say sample one contains um, red index sequences and sample two contains those blue. We can use that information in order to demultiplex the data and write each read to a specific sample. All right, so let's go into the next section, requirements and how to run BCL to FASTQ version two. And so this is just a list of the installation requirements. As I mentioned, BCL to FASTQ is a Linux system or um, software. And so uh, we do recommend to install on a CentOS 6 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 operating system. It does require one gigabit network infrastructure as well as 32 gigabytes of RAM, and that is really useful for BCL FASTQ. When it's opening up all those BCL files, which can be quite large, you need that memory in order to read the files as well as write them to the appropriate FASTQ files as output. BCL FASTQ is user installable. You can do that either from source or through the RPM installer. And the RPM installer really is recommended uh, for most installation cases. And so if you have any questions about the specific installation requirement, that information can be found on the BCL to FASTQ 2.20 user guide. So with BCL to FASTQ, a lot of users are interested in demultiplexing their data, and that's gonna be used based on a sample sheet. We recommend to use Illumina Experiment Manager in order to create the sample sheets. And what Illumina Experiment Manager is, it's a Windows-based software, and it's a wizard that guides the user to create a sample sheet, and the output is gonna be in the correct format so that it ensures that it's compatible with BCL to FASTQ. And so when we launch Illumina Experiment Manager, we have the option um, highlighted in that red box to create the sample sheet. And we click on that box, it allows you to pick the specific instrument. And so in this case, I'll just select a NovaSeq. We can select an application. And for the NovaSeq, the only option present is for FASTQ generation only. And so we'll advance to the next window here. On this screen, you can see in the first um, box, it's the Regent Kit barcode, and that is a required field. You can input the specific region kit barcode if you have that available at the time. Otherwise, you can input a value and the Lumen Experiment Manager will then use that entry to name your resulting sample sheet. You can also select the appropriate library prep kit that you are using for uh, your index sequence. And the Lumen Experiment Manager comes preloaded with all Illumina library prep kits. To make sure that you have all the most current library prep kits available, we'd recommend to make sure that you have the most recent version of Illumina Experiment Manager. You can also input some additional information on the left column, um, such as the experiment name, investigator name, as well as the cycle information and the read type. On the right column, there's some additional options that you can select when creating the sample sheets. And for this example, I'm just gonna leave use adapter trimming uh, enabled here. If we click on next, this will bring you to the next window and this allows you to then specifically fill out the sample information. And so you can see that any value that contains an asterisk is required field. So we're gonna input the sample ID and then make sure that we specify the index one or I7 index as well as the index two or I5 index. We can then click on uh, finish, and it's gonna bring up another window asking if you'd like to view your sample sheet in Excel. Personally, I do like to view the sample sheet in Excel just to make sure that everything looks um, as it should be. And so I'll click on yes. And this is just 
what it would look like if you open it in Excel. It's a comma-separated value, but Excel helps to um, keep all that information um, uh, displayed in the appropriate columns. So for BCL to FASTKEY, let's just focus in on the fields that uh, are um, specific to uh, analysis with BCL to FASTQ. And so, as I mentioned, the required data fields for BCL to FASTQ is going to be the sample underscore ID that always needs to be present in the sample sheet, and the index, and index 2, if you have dual index libraries, those values also need to be included because BCL to FASTQ is going to read the index information in order to demultiplex the sample data. Some additional optional settings are the sample project. And so let's say, for example, sample one corresponds to project A and sample two corresponds to project B. If you uh, fill out that information in the sample values, then in the BCL to FASTQ output folder, those samples will be written to different output directories and they'll be named according to the project. So sample one will be written in output sample or project A and sample two will be written into output sample or project B. The settings option is also in optional setting and in this particular example, uh, we have the adapter value and that would enable adapter trimming if the experimenter would like to perform that. So before we move on, I do want to note that the input for BCL to FASTQ is the sequencing run itself. And so uh, we do recommend to ensure that the sequencing data looks as expected. If you have a high quality sequencing run, then it more than likely will generate high quality FASTQs once you perform BCL to FASTQ. And so there's two resources that we have to help evaluate your sequencing run. The first is Sequence Analysis Viewer, or SAV. And so you can take the run information and view it in this program, and you can help see um, some general run metrics, such as your Q30 scores or your cluster density. And we actually have a great webinar, SAV 101, What Does It All Mean? Um, and this will go in more detail about how to evaluate your SAV data in order to uh, just fully evaluate your sequencing run. Okay, so as I mentioned, the input for BCL to FASTQ is a run folder, and so the run folder is generated by all Illumina instruments, and it's going to contain the base calls as well as some additional associated files for processing. Um, in general, we recommend uh, as best practices to keep the run folder as is. That way, there's no need to manually specify additional settings, such as the input directory or the run directory, and I'll cover that in the next slide. Another component that I really want to key in right now is the runinfo.xml. This file is found in the root run directory, and it is used by BCL to FASTQ to determine the sequencing or the sequencer type. And so for this folder that I'm showing on the right portion of the page. This folder is specific to the MiniSeq or the NextSeq system. And so, in general, the sequencing run folder, it will contain a folder titled data, and then you'll have another folder called intensities, base call, lane 001, or you could have lane 002 all the way to lane 008, depending on which sequencer you're using. And within the lanes, that's where your BCL files are going to be contained. But there are going to be some differences based on which sequencer you're using. And so that's why we really want to make sure that the runinfo.xml is located in the root run directory. So these are just some options on how to configure the different folder settings for BCL to FASTQ. And so um, on the right column page, I've highlighted the associated four configurable settings. So you can specify the run folder dir, and that's going to be the sequencing run folder. You can specify the input dir, where your base call files are going to be located, as well as you can specify uh, an output directory, as well as the specific sample sheet. And so the table on the top, it just has a description of those values, and then also the default values on the very right column of that table. And so, um, what I do want to highlight here is that 
these are the fast queue too. It can be launched from the run folder. So if your current working directory on the terminal is the sequencing run folder, you can launch these of the fast queue without specifying any other commands. And so this next slide really just shows you that the first command in the top, when your current working run directory or current working directory is the sequencing run folder, you just need to call BCL fast queue, and that's just the default installation location. It's going to be functionally the same as the bottom command where you've just uh, included four additional configurable settings, um, specifying the run folder directory, the output directory, input, and the sample sheet. Okay, so as I mentioned in uh, the earlier slides, BCL to FastQ version two, the primary output is your FastQ files. And so the file format is always gonna follow the standard naming convention. It's going to be your sample name, underscore sample number, that's gonna be uh, relative to the uh, sample sheet entry, underscore lane, so where the, which lane it corresponds to, underscore read, either read one or read two, underscore 001.fastq.gz. And that gz just denotes that it's a gzip compressed format. And so an example file format is gonna be sample name, underscore S4, so it's the fourth sample in the sample sheet, underscore L01, so it's coming from lane one, underscore R1, corresponding to read one, um, and that's your FastQ file format. So um, the FastQ files, they are gzip compressed, and so you wouldn't be able to open them in a text editor because they are compressed. You'd first need to extract them, but with most fast key files, they're actually very large. And so even if you um, unzipped the files, because the large file size, it would likely not open as expected in a text editor. And so we just have two commands here, for example, that can help a user query their fast key files and just uh, directly look at some of the content. And so the first, if you want to view the first um, fastq read, you can call the bash command zcat and then specify the specific fastq file name, the vertical character or the pipe character to then type in the next command head dash four, which will print the first four lines of that fastq file and therefore you can directly view the first fastq uh, entry. You can also use the same zcat command, but instead of using the head, uh, after pipe you use wc-l for word count, and then print out the lines, and that would show how many lines are present in your FASTQ file. We also have another great webinar, the FASTQ Processing Tools for Data Analysis. And so if you're interested in that, you can click on the link and view that at a later time. And then lastly, we have the FASTQC app on BaseSpace. This would take in FASTQ files as input, and you can assess the uh, entire FAST contents of the FASTQ file. It will print out reports such as the per base sequence quality, GC content, the percent and bases that are observed, or any overrepresented sequences. And there's some additional uh, charts that are provided by as the output for FASTQC. Um, this is more advantageous to the, just manually inspecting your FASTQ file. So for example, if you look at the first thousand uh, reads of a FASTQ file, it may not be representative of the entire FASTQ file because the FASTQ file can have, let's say, a million reads. You'd only be looking at a small fraction of that, so FASTQC really helps to get a holistic picture of the FASTQ files. Another important output of BCL to FASTQ if you perform demultiplexing is the DMUX summary, F1, L, and in this case, it's one. That just means that it corresponds to lane one, but it, it will generate a file um, specific to each lane of this sequencing run. And so if we start with the green box in the top, that will list out all samples that were specified in the sample sheet, starting with sample zero, which is the undetermined um, sample. On the right, or sorry, on the left column of the page in the red box, this is actually listing the 
tile information. And so if you correspond the rows and columns, each box will indicate the percent of reads demultiplexed per sample per tile. And so you can see that um, each value, if you go down the column, is mostly consistent with one another. We expect some variance because of just the random nature of how samples cluster based on the flow cell, but you can, in general, expect things should be approximately the same um, values for each tile um, on this chart. If you continue to scroll down in this file, you'll also come to another section called the most popular unknown index sequences. And in the blue column, you can see that there's index sequences, so it's always going to be I7 plus I5 if it's a dual index run. And what the unknown index sequence is, is that if a sequencer reads a I7 plus I5 sequence and it does not map to any samples specified in the sample sheet, it will list that information here in the unknown index sequence. And on the right of that, in the orange box, it'll list the number of hits corresponding to that unknown sequence. And so this file is useful in order to compare the expected index sequences uh, compared to what was actually read by the instrument. All right, so let's now move into the next section. Let's talk about some common additional options. And so the first that I'd like to cover is the use basis mask. And so this command specifies how many cycles to use in each read as well as how to use them. And so this is an optional setting. It does not need to be provided. And so if it's not present, then the default values are just going to be read in based on the runinfo.xml file. And you can see uh, the read information of that file uh, below. And so it's a paired end 2 by 151 run, and it's a dual index eight base pairs for either index sequence. And so the types of values that you can provide is Y, which means yes, or use for a read, I, which means use as an index cycle, and N, which means no or ignore. And so for that specific example, the base mask from the run info would be Y comma 151, or sorry, Y 151 comma I8 comma I8 comma Y151. And so the basis mask can be used to shorten the read length, the index length, or even mask out an entire index uh, uh, read if you'd like. And another option available is asterisk can be used. And so if you want to use all cycles, then you can supply the use basis mask Y asterisk comma I asterisk comma I asterisk comma Y asterisk. Okay, let's go through a specific use case of when someone might want to use a basis mask. And so in this example, we're gonna take a high seek flow cell. It has eight lanes on the flow cell and we sequence using the same setup uh, previously, so it's a paired N two by 151 with dual indexes, eight base pairs each. And so when we loaded libraries on the flow cell, for lanes one through seven, those libraries are dual eight base pair indices, but for lane eight, it's a single six base pair index. And so we don't need any I5 information for lane eight. And so what we would do is first in the sample sheet, we're going to want to specify for lanes one through seven that they are eight base pair dual indexes. And so in the index and index two, we're going to specify those specific eight base pair indexes. Now for lane eight, because it's only a single six base pair index, we're going to want to include a six base pair index sequence in the index column. And for index two and any I5 information, we'll want to leave blank. Then when we use BCLFastQ, we're gonna use the command use basis mask, and then eight, which indicates only use this base mask for lane eight, colon, y star, comma, i6, n star, 
So use the first six cycles of read two as uh, index information and ignore the remaining of the read, comma, and star, or ignore the I5 read, comma, Y star in order to uh, read out the read to information as a FASTQ file. All right. Now, the second option that I want to cover is the barcode mismatch. So, a barcode mismatch is the number of differences allowed in an index sequence when assigning reads to samples. We have the available options of either specifying zero mismatches, one mismatch, which is the default setting, or two mismatches. An important distinction that I do want to note is that this is not the number of bases different between an index and a sample sheet. Rather, this is specific to if a sequencer reads an index sequence, how many mismatches it will allow to then map to a specific sample specified in the sample sheet. So let's go through an example. And so if there is an ambiguous assignment, that would be considered a barcode collision. And so for sample one, let's say it has an index sequence um, shown above, and sample two has an index sequence shown below. These are different by a single base in the fourth position. And so if the sequencer reads the following sequence, CTA, TGG, then you can imagine if you allow either that fourth position to be an A or a G, then that would result in an ambiguous solution. But now let's talk about a second example. And so for sample one and sample two, they're now different by two bases, the first position or the fifth position. And so if a index sequence ATAGGG is read by the sequencer, this would also result in a barcode collision because one base mismatch at the first position would map to the first sample, but if you allow a, the fifth position to be a C, then it would map to the second. And so one mismatch would also result in a barcode collision in this scenario as well. And so in order to um, proceed with analysis, the user would need to specify zero barcode mismatches by including that command. Okay, now let's cover some frequently asked questions. How to download a run folder or the BCL files from BaseSpace Sequence Hub? So BaseSpace, through the user interface, does not have an option to download an entire sequencing run folder, although it is possible to download SAV files. So to do this first, we're gonna to want to make sure that the user is either the owner of the run or they have run share access in order to download the files. And so there's three programs that are available to download runs from BaseSpace, either BaseSpace command line interface, base mount, or Python run downloader. So depending on your operating system, you might find one or all of them to be applicable for your use case. And um, for more information, we have a support bulletin that discusses that in further detail. Another question that we um, do get from Illumina Technical Support is how to turn off or on adapter trimming. So as I mentioned in the previous section with the sample sheet, is that in the settings sections, you can specify an adapter or an adapter read to value. And if that is included in your sample sheet, BCL to FASTQ will then use the sequences provided to trim any adapter sequences that are found to be present within the reads. So if you would like to enable adapter trimming, make sure that you include those values in the settings section of the sample sheet. Conversely, if you do not want to perform adapter trimming with BCL to FASTQ, then all you need to do is remove those um, entries from the sample sheet in this specific example, entirely remove line 17 and 18. Um, I do want to note that it's also possible to specify multiple adapter sequences in the settings section. And so you can see in that example, um, you can have sequence one separated by a plus sign and then sequence two, and that would then instruct BCL FASTQ to use both sequences for adapter trimming, and that's going to be used for the entire flow cell. Now I want to cover how to combine data from all lanes. And so 
By default, BCL to FastQ will write one FastQ file per lane per read. And so in the case of a Nexus, if we sequence a paired and uh, run, then it's going to generate eight FastQ files. So one sample will be um, loaded across all four lanes and one for read one and one for read two. Now, if you include the option no lane splitting, then instead of outputting eight FASQ files, it will output two FASQ files, one for read one and one for read two. Now, I do want to note that if you do use this option, then the resulting FASQ files are not compatible with base space uploader. And so if the intent is to generate FASQ files and then upload them to base space, we would advise you not to include that command when generating FASTQ files. Also, if you have FASTQ files and they are uh, generated using the no lane splitting option, you would need to reprocess the data and remove that configurable setting from BCL to FASTQ input. Another option that is available uh, for BCL to FASTQ is it has the ability to create FASTQ files for index reads. And so by default, FASTQ files are only created for sequencing reads, but if you include the command create FASTQ for index reads, it'll create one FASTQ file per index read performed. And so if you performed a dual index run and enabled this option, you would generate two additional FASTQ files. Uh, it would be your uh, I1 corresponding to your first index read and I2 corresponding to the second index read, and those would be listed in the file names instead of read one and read two. And so this is useful for uh, input for some third-party tools such as Chime Metagenomics Pipeline. And so if you uh, need these files for downstream analysis, just go ahead and include that configurable option in the command line. Now, starting with BCL to FastQ version 2.19 and higher, it does have the option to include unique molecular identifiers or UMIs in the FASTQ files. And so this is applicable for some applications such as our SureCell RNA single cell workflow, where the UMI barcode is included in read one. And so what BCL to FASTQ will do is if you specify that UMI, it'll write that to the FASTQ header line. And so the settings for the UMI are going to be specified in the sample sheet settings. Note, this is not in the BCL command line. And so some examples, you can specify if the UMI is in read one, you can specify the length, for example, here. You can specify where the UMI starts from, in this case, cycle one. And then if you also include the trim UMI comma one uh, or true, then it'll trim the UMI and only write the remaining read in the resulting FASTQ file. And for more information about including UMIs in uh, your FASTQ files, refer to page 10 of table five in the BCO FASTQ 2.20 user guide. Lastly, I do want to cover some additional considerations for short reads. And so um, if you're sequencing a library that you only need to perform short sequencing reads, such as a small RNA library with, um, let's say, 21 base pairs, you may observe that end masking will happen to your FASTQ files. And the reason for that is because it's below the default minimum tree, uh, trimmed read length, which is 35 by default, and the adapter masked masking length, uh, which by default is 22. And so in order to avoid this behavior, we're gonna wanna also include the two commands to set the minimum trimmed read length and mask short adapter reads to lower than the default values. In this specific case, just by specifying that to zero, it would ensure that no end masking is performed no matter how short your sequences are. Okay, so that's it for uh, the content of this webinar. And so if you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact tech support. You can reach us by the phone number listed above and use option three for tech support, or you can email us at techsupport at illumina.com Again, we're available 24 hours a day, five days a week. And if you have any questions or would like assistance with evaluating some um, B-cell to FASTQ cases, 
please ensure to send in some files such as the runinfo.xml file, the sample sheet used if you're performing demultiplexing, the nohook.outlog, or any terminal output to help tech support fully evaluate the situation, the exact command line used when invocating BCL to FastQ, and if you have any concerns about how many reads are assigned to a specific sample, the DMUX summary F1L and then uh, whichever lane it corresponds to, that's going to be written in the stats folder of the output directory. All right, and then uh, in the slides, we have some additional resources with links to um, resources on our website. And thank you so much for attending today's webinar, and I'd be happy to take anyone's questions.